Namgele kwe nye futi episode ye Beyond Boundaries. Zika mala musamgele waka khatebe. En namsanje sinletele a beautiful, crazy, mad special. But anyway, anghambi ngeetu wangi hamba nenja ye game. Can you see how like this smile? I can't remove the smile because I'm so happy we're doing off-roading Baba 4x4. This is not even a 4x4. This is a big machine. The operative being big. It's got an today. engine and wheels. That's exactly. Who are we following today? So Namsanjes Landela Upeni Rasmus. Now Upeni Siamazi already from the wheelchair rugby. But then he told us Uti he does something even crazier than a dead ball. Because we know Uti Giafi Wagu wheelchair rugby. And he said he does the off-roading. And we said we're gonna come there. We want to see Uti Gwenzagala and Seven Zaganjani. And I can tell you, isn't also born a land Namsanje. You. you know what, while we are there promising you and just adding the spices and everything, I'm going to look for a feel-good story because I'm already feeling good about these machines behind me. It's going to be so much fun, I'm going to look for a yeah, feel-good story. Yeah, go find a feel-good story. Okay, and then, yeah, you know, this is the smile of the day. Smile of the day. Right, so anyway, so as I show you, it's going to be a fantastic show. Stay tuned, Beyond Boundaries. And I told you I'm coming to get you a feel-good story that will lift you up from where you're sitting because your couch is not as comfortable as when you have something good to make you just stand up but here yeah, i'm with the international man of mystery benny how you doing man yourself, you're already man. doing wheelchair rugby now you are inside a four by four like what's your relationship with danger man uh, well if you don't get close to it then you're living yeah so what are you doing tell me tell me more about this because i'm trying to get people at home who are actually struggling with doing something with their life why are you doing this and what's with the rush? This is uh, extreme 4 by 4 -ing. So being a, a quadriplegic, I'm in my car, I don't need my legs to do it. And I can compete against any able-bodied person and it's no problem. And you're already on World Champs? Uh, this is uh, just actually your normal like fun days. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And you can do national events and then yeah, so that's how it works. So with, with, with wheelchair rugby, what are you doing? Wheelchair rugby, I've, uh, well, right now there's no international tours, but I've been on two, two international tours already. What kind of like rush or adrenaline rush that you get from doing this? Because from where I'm standing, this is danger all the way. This is amazing. I mean, uh, you get a big obstacle and you've got your big engine under you and you try and get to do the obstacle. And you adapted the car, it's really like rock and roll and everything. Yes. You look like an international man of mystery. Can you tell the people at home who are just sitting there and doing nothing, can you give them a message about what they can do with their lives? Get out there. Um, it doesn't mean that you're disabled, that you can't do whatever you want to do. Uh, if you want to do extreme sports, do extreme sports. You see, Kort and Bonda, get out there. This is Benny, my international man of mystery. If you're not feeling good about yourself, then you know what? Watch us again, because this is our feel-good story. Samkel! I hope Uti couldn't any fun deal from that between Utipsi no penny. What I've learned is that this is called a top track. It looks mad, but anyway, I guess here to something a lot more subtle. Valen, please give us the news. Thanks, Sam. It looks like you guys are having way too much fun. Next time, I am coming with. Let's start off the news by looking at this super interesting, a man paralyzed from the shoulders down has been able to walk using a pioneering four-limb robotic system or an exoskeleton that is commanded and controlled by signals from his brain. With a ceiling-mounted harness for balance, the 28-year-old tetraplegic patient used a system of sensors implanted near his brain to send messages to move all four of his paralyzed limbs after a two-year-long trial of the whole-body exoskeleton. The results, published in the Lancet Neurology Journal, bring doctors a step closer to one day being able to help paralyzed patients drive computers using brain signals alone, according to the researchers who led the work. But for now, the exoskeleton is purely an experimental prototype and is far from clinical application, they said. Alim Louis Bernabid, a neurosurgeon and professor at the University of Grenoble in France who co-led the trial, said previous brain-computer technologies have used invasive sensors implanted in the brain where they can be more dangerous and often stop working. Previous versions have also been connected to wires, he said, or have been limited to creating movements in just one limb. In this trial, two recording devices were implanted, 
one either side of the patient's head between the brain and the skin, spanning the sensory motor cortex region of the brain that controls sensation and motor function. Each recorder contained 64 electrodes which collected brain signals and transmitted them to a decoding algorithm. The system translated the brain signals into the movements that the patient thought about and sent his commands to the exoskeleton. Over 24 months, the patient carried out various mental tasks to train the algorithm to understand his thoughts and to progressively increase the number of movements that he could make. Commenting on the results, Tom Shakespeare, a professor of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, said it was a welcome and exciting advance, but added, proof of concept is a long way from usable clinical possibility. A danger of hype always exists in this field, even if ever workable. Cost constraints mean that high-tech options are never going to be available to most people in the world with spinal cord injuries. The International Paralympic Committee has suspended powerlifter Zhu Hui Lin of the Chinese Taipei for two years for committing an anti-doping violation. The five-time Paralympian and Beijing 2008 Paralympic champion, who competes in the up to 79 kilogram class, returned an adverse analytical finding for methylephedrine in a urine sample which was provided after competing at the 2019 World Para Powerlifting World Cup in Hungary. Lin will be ineligible for competition for two years from the 28th of April this year to the 27th of April 2021. All her results from that time onwards will be disqualified, including her World Cup bronze medal that she won in Iga. The Tokyo Organizing Committee of the Olympic and Paralympic Games continues to set high environmentally responsible standards for future hosts. The LOC unveiled special bedding, furniture and materials that will be provided at the Olympic and Paralympic Villages for the duration of the Games. The design of the mattresses comprise three distinct sections supporting the upper, middle and lower body and the hardness of each section can be customized to suit each athlete's body shape. The pillows have an indentation in the center providing good support for the neck and head. All of the bed frames will be made from high-resistance cardboard, which will be able to support weights of up to 200 kilograms. They will be recycled into paper products after the games, with the mattress components being recycled into new plastic products. This will be the first time in Olympic and Paralympic history that all of the village's beds and bedding are made almost entirely from renewable materials. So I feel to Nyamazu Beni Rasmas, yes, a Kulmana, a Sienza E wheelchair rugby, and he said, Wuti, Cizelana Sombona, and the off roading. So, Nang like the Lengua Mumigas when the Abuzos chair like Wutilanga Lanam Sanje, Lima Lanan. Benny, welcome again to Beyond Boundaries, and true to our word, we are here. Thank you very much. How are you feeling so far today with your performance or your cast performance? No, it's going okay. You can't complain too much. We haven't broken yet, that's the last point. We, are, we actually saw one of the cars are, are, are tipping over earlier, so I see you have it on lockdown. None of that has happened with you. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully not for today. Now, tell me, with, with this vehicle, I mean, what's really the, the, the secret to, to having it as solid as it is? And, and again, I was watching you pedaling and driving and shifting. What's really the biggest secret to making sure that you are successful as someone who has a disability? Correct. That's uh, you have to be comfortable in your car. I mean, especially with a disability, you have to be extremely comfortable in your car because you're actually putting yourself in very dangerous spaces, and where you can roll over. And if you don't have control about what you're doing, you are going to roll over. Um, so you have to be very comfortable and and know your car. So you have to practice a bit and make sure that uh, you understand what's happening and understand the dynamics of what you're doing. Now we know what happened or, or where wheelchair rugby started for you. Tell us where the love for off-roading started for you and now you are doing it at a professional level. Off-roading, oh yes, that was always. I mean, I always went safari with my dad and then we went playing with his 4x4 and all those things. So it's always, you basically grow up with it and you want to do it. 
And uh, just before my accident, I competed a little bit. And then after my accident, I wanted to continue competing. So, and here I am. Tell me then, how do, how do these competitions work? Uh, there, there is no disability class. So you, you have to compete like everyone else in that particular, I suppose, category of vehicle. How, how do they work? Correct. So in this competition, it's not about who's driving the car, but what you drive. Okay. So it's all coming down to your vehicle, what wheels, what suspension. Um, not engine size, those things doesn't matter, but it's about capabilities. And you also see there's a lot of pipe frame cars. They are on a completely separate uh, class, if you can say that. So it's more, it's the car, it's not the person. So for myself, there is no disability uh, class or whatever you want to call it. It's just you drive. The purpose of having a, I'll, I'll say a co-pilot, um, the lady sitting next to you, how, how useful are they in a competition like this and what guidance do they give you, if any? So my co-pilot, because I'm a quad and I've got one end on the steering and one end on the brake and petrol, uh, actually does a lot more than any other co-pilot in the cars you'll see today. So my wife, that's my co-pilot, will be working the gears for me when I say to her, the diff locks, um, so there's quite a bit that she actually has to do. She, she, do, she has to concentrate just as much as I do. Um, they also look for you on the left side of the car for banners not to go over it and not to lose points like that. So they are your eyes and your ears on that side. And she also manages half of driving my car, basically. This can be a, a cheap sport because I, I see some of the engines here are, are brand new. It's V6 engines, it's V8 engines. Uh, what, what is the cost of running a sport like this? Because if I buy running shoes, it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying these shoes, for instance. Well, it, it's basically it comes down to each for their own. So again, you can decide what you drive. Um, you don't have to drive the nicest car or the best 4x4 to be able to enjoy the day. I mean, you've got cars here easily that goes up to one and a half million rand, easily, without any doubt. And then you've got cars that's 20,000 rand. And the guy in the 20,000 rand car enjoys it just as much as the guy that's a 1.5 million rand car. So it comes down to what you want to do, how serious you want to take it, and what you want to do to your vehicle. So basic, if you, if you can buy an old second-hand 4x4 and you can start, you can start the sport for 40,000 rand or 30,000 rand, whatever you can find that's cheap and reliable enough to do it. Is there any form of training that you must go through before you can come and compete no. uh, at this level or you just come and you, you try your luck? You and come and you enroll and you try your luck and you see what happens. Training is your own problem. Wow. Lastly then, uh, someone watching from home, if, if I mean you, you brought us all the way out here and, and we've seen you in action, I'm genuinely impressed. What, what can someone sitting at home take away from this experience? Again, taking into account that you already play wheelchair rugby, what can they take away from this off-roading that you are doing here? Well, to be, to be very honest with you, um, wheelchair rugby is amazing, it's, it's one of my favourite sports uh, and the community that you've got in wheelchair rugby is, is, is one of the most important things of the game. But if you come to the 4x4, you get the same. You get the same community, you get the same support, you get the same help from people. So what you can take from it is a nice day out, Enjoy yourself, you uh, drive some 4x4, you laugh with the guys, and yeah, it's a good way to enjoy life. So you've heard him as well, he's already said that coming out here there is no disability, it is purely down to what you are driving. So again, there is no disability, it is all in the mind. Benny, thank you so much and again, all the best with all your upcoming competitions and we hope that one day soon you're going to hit that number one spot. Thank you very much, we'll try our best. Benny Rasmus, everyone. You know, when you love something, you go through major length to make sure that you get the best of what you like. And Bernie here decided that, you know what, I'm gonna make my off-roading easier. And this car is fully adapted to the way he wanted to do. And he wants to feel the way, like you want to feel the engine, you want to feel the rock. But Benny, take us through what you did to make this like easier for you? Well, this is a, obviously a Land Rover Defender. Um, this is my brakes. This is my petrol to go forward. Uh, this is for my hands because you need to be quite sturdy uh, with all the bumps and going up and down stuff. That's why I tape my wrist as well. This is my normal automatic gearbox, the 4x4 
gear lever and then all the normal switches to make it possible. And you have okay. stuff at the back. I see like batteries, I've seen like there's a power station, a cool like Escom vibe. What's happening that side? Uh, there at the back behind the uh, passenger seat, we've got a compressor for the diff locks. Um, and then uh, obviously on the other side, just your normal battery for the car. And all these things have helped you to make this car even stronger and much more fun. Yeah, and, and practical for, for what we're doing. Okay, this is the fully adapted car for burning. Guys, I can safely say Bernie is a superhero and you're driving your supermobile. Thank you very much. This is the kit and Kaburu. If you don't know what Bernie is driving, we just took you through the whole thing, man. Thank you very much, Bernie. Thank Let's you. hope you are showing them flames. We'll try. Thank okay. you. Whenever Maskulumange Athletics and we say IPC World Championships, you think of speed, you think of fast movement. So, Isaskok has already selected a team that is going to be representing in South Africa at Dubai Guma World Championships. It's going to be fast, world records are going to be broken, and we are going to be there to make sure which we bring you all of the action from at Dubai, from the IPC World Championships. Let us go and meet the team and start profiling our athletes. The Sprint Queen, Anne-Renée Yves, has been in outstanding form this season and she wants to bow out at next year's Tokyo Games on a high. After battling with injury for many seasons, Anne-Renée has come back with African records in the 100 and 200 and a world record in the 400 metres this year. The 2015 one-lap champion in the T47 class has not won Paralympic gold in her main event and next year will mark a decade in the sport. The teen sensation from Pretoria, Simone Krier, first broke the world discus record in the F38 class at Nationals this year. And since the tears shed between her and her dad on that day, she has gone better at the World Junior Championships. Unfortunately, her two disciplines were not medal events. But going into her first senior championships, she's ranked top in both the discus and the shot puts. She's gone past the distances that she threw in Stellenbosch and her best unofficial throw is 33.92 metres in the discus and 11.24 metres in the shot. The grand dame of the Paralympic movement in South Africa, Zanele Situ, the first female South African black athlete to win a Paralympic gold medal with her gold in Sydney back in 2000. After two decades of competing, the javelin specialist remains a medal winner. She's won bronze in her event for the last four editions of the World Championships and she'll have tough competition once again, this time mostly from the continent in Tunisia's Hania Eidi and Nigeria's Flora Ugunwa. The Free State darling Lausanne Kutsia is eager to win a major championship medal. Late in August, she competed at the Handisport meet in France, where her 4 minute 51.65 seconds means she goes into the meet as the top ranked 1,500 meter T11 athletes. Kutsia lost her world record in the 5,000 meters in April this year to Kenya's Mary Njoroge, but she enters worlds ranked third in the event, the same ranking that she has in the 800 meters. In all the events she competes in, Kutsia is a good trifecta bet. The double amputee who stole the hearts of all South Africans at the last Paralympics with his silver medal at just 14 years old, Ntando Mahlangu. Mahlangu is ranked the best T61 athlete in all the events he competes in and set three world records and two world leads at the national championships this year. He's been selected as brand ambassador for Team Osa, Toyota South Africa and Citibank leading up to the Tokyo Games next year. All eyes will be on those two blades tearing up the track in Dubai. Reigning 200 and 400 meter world champion and reigning 100 and 400 meter Paralympic champion, Charles de Toy, will enter these championships as the hunted in the T37 category. In the 100 meters, he's ranked sixth with the season's best coming from Andrei Vidovin of Russia third in the 200 meters and in his best event the 400 meters on paper he'll also be chasing Vidovin to successfully defend his crown. De Toy is the man for the big moments and it'll be a true test of character in Dubai. Go show them what you have Charles. T44 star Mpumalelo Mflongo is the only athlete in his class to jump beyond seven meters and with three new world records this year alone Mflongo is looking at triple gold in the 100, 200 and long jump. 
He ran 11.12 seconds in Paris in August for the 100 and 23.13 seconds in the 200 meters in Stellenbosch in March. It's fair to say that the record keepers will be watching his events closely. Mplongo only joined disability sport in 2014 and what a gain it has been for the country. The Paralympic javelin champion Reinhard Hamann has managed to balance life on and off the track like an expert. He's making a timely return to form after bronze at the Commonwealth Games last year. The National Disability Sport Federation's media manager and top photographer returns to the Arab world aiming to return to the top step of the World Championship podium. He lost out on a third consecutive gold in Doha in 2015 and a glance at the current world ranking shows it will be a battle between South Africa and Australia for gold in the F38 javelin category. Corey Anderson has a season best 93 centimetres further than Haman's. Diane Bass secured silver in Australia at the Commonwealth Games in the T3800 metres last year. But he will have a much tougher time in the event at Worlds and he'll look to the 200 where he is ranked fourth in the world this year and the 400 where he is entering the championships as the Paralympic champion and with the world's second best time. In 2012, a tragic gymnastics accident left Brandon Beek wheelchair bound as a quadriplegic. And while he and his foundation are keeping the hope alive that he will walk one day again, in the meantime, he's flying around the Tarleton in the super competitive T52 class. In the 400 meters, he'll be aiming to go sub 60 seconds, which potentially would place him on the podium. He's in the world's top 10 in the 100 meters, but it's in the 200 that he has the best chance of winning a medal. Going into the championships, he's the fourth fastest this year. The World Parathletics Championships begins in Dubai on the 7th of November. This is how we close the show today, like with Beyond Boundaries from Airport Emma Khalis. Tips, yes. look how at, was the show for look you? Look at the smile. I started the show with the same smile and I'm closing with the smile because off-roading is everything, man. Dust and all, and we brought you a good show. If you were not lifted up by this show, you have a problem. Let me keep my smile on. No, keep your smile on. And again, guys, I mean, there's so much that we can learn from Upeni. He is extremely capable wheelchair rugby player. And again, he's so capable with the off-roading just like his car this is what we bring you and again there's going to be more athletics action in the months to come yep, so yep, yep. make sure Wuti, you keep on watching us but guys guys i mean hey, man, we are on youtube guys if you didn't see us properly look at look at us on youtube and go to facebook and i'll play beyond yeah. boundaries but you know what this smile ne? is the smile of this the episode stays. let me smile away all right guys we're gonna see you next week sunday lagu beyond boundaries half past one on sapc2 samgelo khatebe signing out Airport was too amazing. <laughs>